Hello, my friends, and welcome back to our continued Vine Let's Play Ace Attorney Dual Destinies for the PS5. My name is the Flatless Bear. This is your Survey Gaming Channel, and we're about to probably go back into court. I probably could have played a little bit longer to get to that point, but I'm not really sure how much further we are. But Fulbright does have full confidence in us, as after all, you are the only ones who can stop him in court. I hope you're all having a wonderful, fantastic, amazing, awesome day today. You really care and want what's best for Puss Kitty Blackbird, don't you, detective? Leave the courtroom to us. It's not like we want a guilty verdict, either. I was hoping you would say that. I am really grateful to the two of you. To show you my thanks, I'll give you another bit of information. It's about the eyewitness. I saw her hanging around the space and entrance a little while ago. Oh, really? Well, then let's go find him, Mr. Wright. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. We had the witness still talk to. Thanks, you two. I feel a lot better now that I've been able to finally get that off my chest. I'm going to work extra hard to find that perfect piece of evidence for you. In justice we trust on three. One, two, three. In justice we trust. Okay, later. Ha 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 ha. There he goes. Wait, were we supposed to say Injustice We Trust back there, too? Of course you were! We all were! Hopefully everyone in the audience did it, too. Let's go see that witness now. All right. The space of the entrance it is. December 19th, Cosmos Space and Entrance. The witness must be around here somewhere. Oh, it's another robot. Hello, hello. Uh-oh. Don't tell me the witness is a robot. Hello. Come over here. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Widget made a friend. Are you sightseeing? Are you lost? Are you... I am Coco. Shall I guide you? G guide you? I don't know why, but this robot is kind of freaking me out. <laughs> Hey, you're not supposed to be wandering around. Oh, look at her. She looks amazing. Hey, don't beat up the cute, adorable robot. That's not cool. Again, hmm, I've had it with you, you hunk of junk. Gah! Oh, the dots. I I'm outside. Am I wandering? Why did that happen? Okay, look a bit, like a junk. You don't know how close you came. If you did step out of it, I was going to put you on the curb on trash day. Nothing works better than a 42 degree I fight to get karate chop. That's pretty specific. Excuse me, but you're the one who witnessed the murder. Oh, and I'm Phoenix Wright, the lead attorney for this case. How do you do? Huh. <sighs> Big shed lawyers, huh? I am out of Blackwell. Blackwell? Whoa, 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 wait a second! I'm a researcher developing robots here at the Cosmos Space Center. Blackwell? Could she be? I is she Blackwell's sister? Question mark? I I'm not gonna say why. I'm leaning towards sister. And this good for nothing robot is named Hunker Junk. My name is a Hunker Junk. My name is Clocko. That's me, Miss Ara. Quit complaining. Your mother number is Punko too. Gah, but Miss Ara, everyone calls me Clocko. Quit is squawking already. No, what are you doing? No, 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 you're ruining my brain. Ah! There, I bet you won't be talking back now. Gah, I will obey completely. Yikes, I better watch what wires I cross with this one. Your last name. Your last name is Blackwell. Do you have a relative in the legal position or profession? You are correct, Simon Blackwell, who used to be a prosecutor, is. 
Shut up. Only speak when I order you to speak. Simon is my little brother. Do you know him? Aha! Called it! Yes, we met him at court a few times. Right, Athena? Ah. What a dull creature. Has the switch been turned off? Athena being shy? This is new. Oh yeah, I heard he was prosecuting again, despite being a prisoner. Why, doesn't he just stick to solving disputes among inmates and prisons, right? Hmm? Hey, what do you think, hunk of junk? Ah, Miss R, that hurts! I'm asking you a question. Why don't you answer me, you useless hunk of junk? I really don't like her. She's mean to cute, adorable robot. She's got a great design, but she's mean. But Miss R, you told me all to speak when you ordered me to speak. I told you never to talk back to me. You're worth more than a scrap. Robot abuse. Hawk attacks. Blackpool family life must sure be interesting. Well, do you have any other questions? Wait, of course you do. You're a lawyer. It's not like I'm on Simon's side or anything. I just want to get this over with. A witness. So, you're the person who witnessed the incident. That's right. I was on the fourth floor of the main building. In the robotics lab. The explosion disabled the elevators. So I lowered my emergency ladder like the detective leading the excavation told me to. But it was such a pain. Why could they have used the ladders in the other rooms? Hmm? It must have been a very troubling experience. Probably best to just humor her there. Then, as I passed by the third floor burning lounge room window on my way down, I saw the crime as it happened. And, well, that's about it. So, you saw the crime as it happened. And that's about it. I see. Wait, what? You saw it be committed? It's no time to just nod and repeat. So, you saw into the third floor lounge. The very scene of the crime. That's right. There's a small window on the right-hand side of the room. I looked through that from the outside. The room was pitch black, but I saw a shady figure holding a light in the left hand. Hmm. See, the interesting thing is, if she's a murderer, which we can't discount, then she could be lying about all of this. And a knife in the right. That must have been the culprit. Did you see who that person was? Of course not. The power was out on the floor then, and there was only that tiny window. Okay, so I still think the obvious answer is this is going to be Cosmos as a guilty party. Or it could be a murder bot uh, reprogrammed by Cosmos. But either way, when she says that she can't see them, that means that she's not lying about this. She's telling the truth, but she doesn't have conclusive evidence. I see. But you did witness the moment of the murder. Yes, I saw the figure with the light to raise the knife, and... It happened at precisely 10 a.m. Did you witness anything else? Did the killer have any distinguishing features? I already told you, it was pitch black in there, though. I did notice that the light of the person I had in the light hand was a pretty ordinate on it. It looked like a planet. It was blue, like a little Earth emblem. They had good taste in the Kozak anyway. So that's an important clue. We gotta find someone who has that. An Earth emblem on the lighter. I better remember that. RS statement added to the court record. The perp held a lighter with an Earth emblem on it in the left hand and a knife in the right. I bet you also it's important like which hand is holding what. Thank you for your statement. We'll definitely prove Mr. Starbucks... Innocent with it. 
Ha ha ha, yeah, right. I want to hold my breath. Pardon me? Oh, did I hurt your feelings? Sorry, I just detest lawyers, that's all. What don't you like about lawyers? It's just an instinctive dislike. But don't feel bad, I hate prosecutors even more. That didn't make me feel any better, actually. Why do you hate lawyers? Why do you hate lawyers so much? Little thing from my past. The whole legal system is meaningless in the first place. I certainly don't agree. I mean, people are imperfect. They lie, they're influenced by silly emotions. You can't expect such imperfect creatures to hold a reasonable system of law. I like robots much better. Even set sex like this one. Yikes! What the heck is wrong with this woman? Hey you, look alive there. Ah, uh, yes, here I go. I am the ultimate robot with the base speed of I can't find the and I can do everything with robots all the time. Ah! Alright, that's enough out of you. You're getting a little too carried away. Gag! Uh, uh, what was I doing? I was talking about pulling the wall. That was weird. Yup, I like robots much better. At least you can make them any way you want them. I like humans with their petty emotions and constant worries. How can you say such things? Feeling emotions, worried about things that we care about. That's what makes us human. Well, 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 the girl finally talks, so she starts with a speech. Well, that's what makes us human. <laughs> you mean getting angry and snorting like that? Rational thought, that's what separates humans from animals. Unfortunately, your vision capabilities are more akin to that of a clever little monkey. But that's nothing to be ashamed of. It must be nice to have such a simple mind. Can I punch you, boss? Get a hold of yourself, Athena. Ah, uh, humans certainly absurd. I said you were clever, didn't I, poor thing? Tell me, with people like you in charge, how can I possibly trust the legal system, hmm? So, she just trusts not only lawyers and prosecutors, but the whole legal system? What in the world happened to this woman to make her so bitter? Even if somebody pointed to me was killed, I will never wish to see the killer brought to trial. Because I'd much rather kill them myself. You can't be serious. Hmm? That thing that you went around your neck. Hmm. Oh, did this? Around Athena's neck? Does she mean widget? Oh, I get it. Well, well, Her Royal Highness has returned at last to her castle. Royal what? Is she talking about Athena? By the way, I heard the rumors. Our director is going to be the star witness at court tomorrow, right? Director Cosmos, yes, that's right. You poor things. You'd better be careful. That old man is a big liar and a huge braggart. What? He might seem like a big wig, but the center has all kinds of problems. He has a lot of skeletons in his closet. But it's your problem. So why should I care? What? That's it? No friendly tips? No good luck, guys? Just splendid. I'll leave you to your woes. Come on, you hunk of junk. What do you mean by princess returning to castle, Athena? 
It's sad to me that she doesn't believe in a legal system anymore. She must have had a very bad experience to make her feel that way. Are you alright, Athena? You seem very down. Yeah, I just can't believe she said other things. Wow, she's really upset. Has she been trying to not let it show all this time? Well, I guess it's not all surprising. You hear about fabricated evidence of false indictment on the news all the time. You mean that whole duck itch of the law nonsense? I'm so sick of hearing about that. Well, all we can do is believe in what we're doing. Yeah, you're right, boss. I agree. Maybe it's time we went back to see Mr. Starbuck. Good idea. We should tell him about the bullet in Mr. Blackwell's statement. Alright then, next stop, the detention center. December 19th detention center. Visitor's room. <sighs> Others are here. It must be bad news. Hey, not necessarily. We found a new witness. A researcher saw the moment of the murder through the lounge window during her escape. Really? So they're gonna let me go? Unfortunately, it was dark and she couldn't identify the person. Ugh. I should have known. My stars never aligned just right. Two. But we gotta lead too, Mr. Starbuck. The murderer had a lighter with an earth emblem on it. A lighter with an earth emblem? <sighs> oh! Don't tell me you own one. Did you remember something? Yep, sure did. Just a little bit, though. Anything at all would be a help, so please tell us what you remembered. The lighter. Thought I was a cop this whole time, but now I remember. Woke up for a few brief moments. That's huge. Do you remember seeing anything? A uh, lighter. I saw the flame of a lighter floating in the darkness. Good, good. What else did you see? What else was nearby? Well, it was definitely the boarding lounge. It must have been after Clay carried me there. In the light from the flame, I saw a dark shadow flickering. A dark shadow? That must have been... The third party we've been looking for. Thank you, Mr. Starbuck. You've been more help than you know. If we can prove there was this third person at the scene and that they're the real killer, then you'll be cleared of our suspicion. The key will be whether or not we can identify this third person in court tomorrow. At least we have something to go on, and that's a big plus. I should probably tidy the evidence up a bit before someone mistakes me for a hoarder. Hey, thank you, that helps a lot. Irrelevant evidence tidy up. Now that we have a glimmer of hope, I'm suddenly starving. Why don't we go back to the office and treat ourselves a big celebration in advance? For someone who's highly empathetic, you can be surprisingly unsympathetic. December 19th, write anything agency. So you find a strategy for tomorrow's trial, huh? Good for you, Daddy. Well, that's one step forward anyway. Hopefully it'll give us a fighting chance in court. As long as we can find out who this third person is. Now let's get something to eat. I'm starving. My vote is for Elder and Snootos. Oh, Apollo? Hmm. What are you doing here? I didn't think the clink was ready to release you yet. It's good to see him up on his feet. My wounds are fine, and I'm done lying around. Apollo, you're supposed to be in bed. Leave the kiss to us. We'll take it from here. Thanks, but that's not an option. Not for me. Apollo. Your injuries. You shouldn't underestimate your injuries, Apollo, and I don't want you overdoing it. 
I'm fine. I'm not in pain anymore. Besides, they just gave me an IV at the clinic. An IV is a cure-all, mummy man. Anyway, just tell me how the case is going. How you guys made any progress? A suspicious figure was spotted at the scene. We think they must be the real killer. A suspicious figure, huh? Right. I... I thought you'd be happier than that. Oh, don't get me wrong. I'm happy. And I fully intend to see Clay's murder apprehended. Absolutely nothing will get in the way of that. Clay Tarrant. Clay was your best friend, right, Apollo? That's right. Best friend since Juni High. Sounds like me and Juni. So what was Clay like? Well, he was full of compassion and energy. And he had a really loud voice. If the two of you did voice training together, I bet you break a few windows. Ha ha ha, you know, I bet you're right. It seems like only yesterday, Clay was a guy who lived for his dreams. We used to talk about it a lot. He was going to be an astronaut and meet a lawyer. We talk about it into the night, and even then, we never grew tired of it. Apollo, about that jacket. Oh, it's Clay's. I knew it. It's a special jacket that was only issued to members of the Hat Project. It's a cool jacket, I like that look on him. He was finally able to get one of his own since he was selected for the Hat 2 mission. He... he always looks so proud wearing it. But just when his dream was finally coming true. I... I still can't believe it. Dang it! It's not fair! Apollo. I hope you don't try to carry the burden all alone. I guess we were both unlucky. My own to be was a disaster. I guess you're right on some level. That trial a year and a half ago wasn't exactly the smoothest of starts. That was a rough time for me. But Clay refused to let me quit. You're fine, he'd say. Don't give up. It was right during his screening exams, too. I couldn't have become a full-fledged lawyer without him. That you're fine of his is why I'm still standing here today. You're fine, huh? I'm fine. You're fine, and I'm fine. We're well, like your catchphrases, weren't they? Aha, <laughs> something like that. Sure brings back old memories. When we were in junior high, Clay's mom passed away in an accident. But he wanted to show his sadness to anyone. One night, I found him crying all alone in the school courtyard. Mom, mom. Get away, Apollo. Don't come over here. Uh. Clay, listen to me. I don't have a mother either. Huh? Aw, look at the kids. That's a great picture right there. Aww, it's so good. I, I, I always think everyone else has a mom. Why am I the only one? But you know, when I start to feel that way, I yell at the top of my lungs. I'll holler, I'm fine. And you know what? Then uh, I start to feel like maybe I really am fine. Apollo Justice is fine. Okay, Clay? Now it's your turn. Um, okay. Clay Tarrant is fine. There you go. Now we're both fine. Ha ha ha. We're fine. Ha ha. We're fine. Ha ha ha. What are you laughing about? Ha ha ha. See? We're fine. You laugh first. Ha ha. I'm fine. You're fine. We're both fine. Ha ha ha. Such a sweet scene. Thanks, Apollo. When you say it out loud, it really starts to feel real. And as long as you don't give up, you can keep on fighting. That's what we believed. As long as you don't give up. There's someone else who says something similar. If I give in my fear, I'll never find the truth. As long as I don't give up, I can keep up the fight. 
play called Mr. Starbuck, his mentor, and looked up to him. I wonder if I can be a good role model for my staff like Mr. Starbuck. Ah, <sighs> sorry, Mr. Wright. But I'll be taking a leave of absence. What? Wait, what do you mean by a leave? You're really serious. Can you at least give me a reason why? When I put Clay's jacket on, I swore to him that I would catch this killer myself. But, but that's our goal too. I agree with Athena. We should work together to find the truth. The truth, huh? That's a noble cause. What if you, what if the truth you seek and the truth I seek turn out to be different? I, I'm not sure I follow. What are you saying, Apollo? Yeah, truth is truth. I'm going to catch the person responsible for taking my friend's life in my own way. Take your care, Mr. Starbuck, for me. Now, I must be going. Goodbye. What does he have in mind? He doesn't have in mind of killing someone, does he? Goodbye. Did you just say goodbye? I said so that to see the anger and hatred coming from him. And also, suspicion. Ark, he's not walking out on us like this. I'm going to talk some sense to him. Hold on, Athena. Apollo can believe what he wants, but I believe he's wrong. Even if we take different paths, the truth we arrive at should be the same. I think the quicker we solve this case, the better it'll be for Apollo. Yeah, you're right, boss. Alright, that's enough for one day. Make sure you're ready for tomorrow's trial, okay? If you were here right now, Apollo would say, I'm fine. Everything is fine. I just hope things really do turn out fine tomorrow. To be continued? Alright, well, we still have a little more time. We can, uh... Probably jump into the into the next step here. Accidentally, it stopped recording for some reason in the middle of me trying to say. But here we are, December twenty at ten fifteen a.m. Just court courtroom number five. I guess my brain was trying to tell me, "Flightless, you, you can stop now." And I'm like, "No, I can't stop now. I still got more time on the clock. Let's go." Day two, the court is now in session. All rise! Uh, where's the judge? I suppose uh, we should reconvene the trial of Solomon Sturbeck or Sullivan. Objection! Um, Your Honor, could you please come out from on your bench? There are more, no more bombs. I promise. Uh, oh yes, uh, my apologies. I'm still a little jumpy when it comes to trials involving booms. I mean, first the courtroom exploded. And then Mr. Tony itself distracted. Oh yeah, I forgot about all that. <laughs> no wonder why he's so freaked out. I guess that's one way of describing what happened to Tony. Anyway, it seems that Mr. Justice was seriously wounded by Mr. Tony's actions. So you, Mr. Wright, will be taking up the defense? You have an understanding of what has happened in the trial so far? Yes, Your Honor. The defense is ready to go. Very well. Is the prosecution also ready? Hmm. Huh. Mm. huh? I take it you'd like me to give the opening statement this time? Looks like the judge has become a pretty good mind reader. <laughs> Well, he's certainly more than his fair share of colorful prosecutors. You could say he's something of a veteran of sorts. Well, let's see, in the previous part of this trial, we learned that the victim, Clay Terry. Well, he escaped from the launch pad one, carrying the defendant, Solomon Starbuck. Well, then there were explosions on the second floor of the Space Center in the rocket itself. Two astronauts used the launch pad one corridor to reach the boarding lounge. And... Well, how could a victim climb down the ladder if he was carrying the defendant? Well, that was the mystery that needed to be solved. 
where Mr. Justice proved that the victim was killed in the boarding lounge. Prosecutor Blackwell, were you able to discover any new facts related to this point? Upon further investigation, we discovered an oxygen tank fragment in the lounge. Surprisingly, it would appear that Justice Soto's argument was correct. So that means the testimony is that the first two people on the scene are suspect. There were two people who claimed to be the first on the scene. But can we truly trust such statements? Let's see. There are two people with Detective Candace Arm and Yuri Cosmos, right? You think that one of them might have given a false statement to the police? Yes, it's certainly possible. We might have to do a little more digging and one of them is dead so we can ask them. And just as our team was about to cross-examine Detective Arm, the courtroom bombing incident occurred and the trial was put on hold. That accursed fellow. He killed my witness. He killed Detective Arm. He definitely put the kabish on anyone asking him about what she saw. Exactly. In other words, the question of who killed the victim in the boarding lounge has, once again, become the main focus of this trial. It's obvious Prosecutor Blackwell still thinks it was Mr. Starbuck. Fulbright said that Blackwell has a thing against the astronaut. Nevertheless, the defense argues that there was a third person in the lounge, and that's who killed the victim. Objection! Huh. To make such reckless claims in a courtroom takes a bold man or a stupid one. There was no third person in the boarding lounge. Or have you gotten dirty already, old man? Objection! We'll see who's the daughter after I trance you with my years of experience, little boy. In any case, Mr. Starbuck claims he saw someone leaving the lounge. Furthermore, a Space Center employee also saw a suspicious figure at the scene. Are they still a third person? Hmm. I see my sister has been running her mouth. That's right. I almost forgot that Aura is Prosecutor Blackwell's sister. No matter, she didn't see this mystery person's face clearly. Therefore, there is no evidence to indicate that this person was not the defendant. Hmm, I guess the possibility that the figure was Mr. Starbuck is still there. In brief, we need to determine if a third person was there or not. To this end, we should hear the testimony of one of the first people on the scene. Director Cosmos, huh? We will, Bailiff, please bring the witness to the stand. Why, I believe I've seen you before in the newspapers. Of course you have. Of course you have. For I am Yuri Cosmos. Director of the Cosmos Space Center. Which was of course named Dr. Me. Yardy Cosmos. Do you have anything you wish to ask me? Looks like he's all good up to do some bragging. Seven years ago, I successfully launched the Hot One on. The okay, he killed that music pretty quick. Everyone already knows how brilliant you are. Even I am trying to hold back my tears at seeing such a great man standing before me. So, could you please proceed directly to your important testimony? Hmm. Uh -huh. Yes, it is fine. The young lad has a proper appreciation of greatness. Then allow me to begin my epochal testimony that will be recorded in the annals of history. That speech of Puskin and Holes just now. It sounded more to me like he was spoken for that to Dr. Cosmos. It's probably for best that it sailed right over the director's head. Now then, Director Cosmos, the condensed version of your illustrious testimony, if you would please. We only have all day and maybe about six blocks of dicks. 
I like how he's still riding his bike. What I saw at the scene. Detective Arm and I rush towards the voting lounge together. We went via the control room and peeked in from there to see what was going on inside. We saw a figure standing in the middle of the lounge and Terran lying on the floor. I hate to see it. But I can only imagine the stunning figure that must have been Star Booker. Hmm, I see. So in your testimony you claim, you arrived on the scene after the two had escaped from the lunch pad to the lamp. And just after the lunch had been killed, just after the victim had been killed. Oh, the horror. Oh, the horror. The humanity. But what I see it is what I saw, and what I saw is what I see it. Courageous action to take in the face of such terrifying explosions, what did you say? To save my men, I went personally into the epicenter of danger. Risking my own life for theirs. <laughs> Well, what do you know? It sounds like the detective really cares about his men. Yeah, although it sounds more like he was scared and just had a peek from far away. Is the defense ready to cross-examine the witness? Yes, your honor. Hmm. Director Cosmos' testimony is pretty vague. I'm going to have to press him and draw him out of information before I can do anything else. Cross-examination. What I saw at the scene. Detective Arm and I rushed towards the border lounge together. Hold it. Where were you coming from? The sixth floor. We were making sure any stragglers made their way to the fourth floor. It was then we heard about Sabak and Taran, and hurried to the third floor lounge. On my gladiator scooter hair, of course. Why do you keep calling it galactic? Does that have something to do with space? Of course, it is specifically designed to be used on galactic battle seeds. I see. Then I take it works in zero G two. Sadly, no. With the current state of technology as it is, I am afraid it would just float about and be galactically useless. Well, that's a galactic bummer. <laughs> I see. So you rush to the boarding lounge and your space age pogo stick. <laughs> when you got to the scene, what did you see? We went via the control room and peeked in there to see what was going on inside. Hold it. Let's see. According to this diagram, you didn't have to go through the control room to get to the boarding lounge one. It looks like you could have gotten there from the southern corridor as well. Well, yes, but in a host. Detective Arm rushed ahead of me towards the control room. All I could do was merely follow behind her. I see. So, if we peeked into the boarding lounge from the control room door and... We saw a figure standing in the middle of the lounge and Tiran lying on the floor. So you couldn't see who that figure was clearly or what they were doing. Sadly, the only thing I could tell was that there was a person standing more seamless. The defendant no doubt standing aghast at his deed. What other explanation is there? Ark, so close but without evidence, I can't prove that person's a third party. 
I don't believe she needs on. I hate to say it, but I can only imagine this standing figure must have been Starbuck. Aqua Blackwell also saw a suspicious figure in the lounge. But she gave the statement that it was too dark to see the person's face clearly. Did you see this figure's face clearly? No, not clearly. The light they were holding illuminated the area around the feet at the time. But other than that, I could see the Tedels. Well, that's why I could see Teddy N, but I couldn't see who the other person was. So, for all you know, it might not have been Mr. Starbuck, is that correct? I would like to believe that. Starbuck isn't the type of man who's capable of murder. Objection! When the witness entered the boarding lounge, there was no third person there. Isn't that correct, Great Space Center Director? Oh, yes, well that's right. Only Starbuck and Tarian were there by that time. After we peeked in, the lounge suddenly went dark, and the figure vanished. You mean they disappeared? That's odd. Objection! The reason the figure appeared to vanish is because it was the defendant. When the witnesses weren't looking, he fell to the floor and feigned consciousness. Hold, it. Hold on, Director Cosmos, did you ever take your eyes off the scene? Just for a brief instant, about as long as it takes for a shooting star to go by. If you took your eyes off the scene, then this third person could have escaped during that time. Uh, but what escape route could this person have used? The direction opposite the control room, the southern door to the elevators. There's no security lock on that door, so it would have been impossible to escape that way. Objection! All things are possible right to know. The real question is... Do you have any proof? Uh, well... If we're just talking possibilities, we could each profess whatever we like. An innate who used to be a university professor and lunar researcher used to say that there is a kingdom of little green men who live under the surface of the moon. As long as they don't punish us in the name of said moon for what we've done to it. <laughs> Oh, Sailor Moon reference! I love it! But I say, where is your proof that this quaint kingdom exists? He's calling your theory a work of fiction, boss. And he's right. I don't have any proof yet. Still. The southern door was a possible escape route. I better make a mental note of that. Director Cosmos, may I ask you a question? Oh, yes. Why did you look away from the boarding lounge? Ha ha ha! Well, there's actually another tale of bravery beyond the answer to that. It was when Detective Arms saw the figure and raised her gun. Being a great humanitarian and protector of mankind, I tried to stop her. What? You're saying Detective Arm raised her gun as soon as she saw the figure? I imagine her instincts as a detective told her that they were the killer. Hmm, I don't know about that. And were you able to prevent Detective Arm from firing her gun? I'm afraid I was too late. I was unable to stop her. She identified herself clearly, and then... She fired two wanted shots at the Shadow Vui figure. Hmm. 
It's information about Detective Arm's actions, so it's critically important. Please add it to your testimony. Detective Arm fired two bullet shots at the figure. And neither of these two shots hit the culprit? Well, that is correct. The detective appears to have missed some purpose. Hmm. But did she really? There's something about this that bothers me. So Detective Arm fired two warning shots, did she? That's the first time the info has come out. I wonder if I can find any inconsistencies. I've only found one bullet. Are you sure you were really paying attention to what Detective Arm was doing? You doubt my words. Words that will someday be written down in history books. Wow, look at him go. He is mad. Somehow, I don't think that those exact words will ever be written down in any history books. Mr. Ray, can you please explain yourself so we can all understand? You say that Detective Arm fired two warning shots. And yet only one bullet hole was ever found at the scene. What? Only one bullet hole means the gun was only fired once. And yet Director Cosmos is saying Director Co Arm fired two shots. No editor will allow such a glaring contradiction into a history book. Objection. Unfortunately for you, the witness's words are true. We confirm that two shots were fired from Detective Arm's gun. Objection. Really? But there was only one bullet hole at the scene. Where did the other bullet hole vanish to? Ah! Here, should know the answer to that already. Inside the person? I should? During the previous trial, a certain oxygen tank was presented as evidence. We've already discussed that was ruptured in the lounge, have we not? Well, it appears that the thing that ruptured it was a bullet. A bullet that was found in the tank, to be precise. This bullet was fired from a 38 caliber gun, the same caliber as a detective's gun. Aha! Aha! Oh, on! It's a 10 caliber handgun. What? Oxygen tank updated in the court record. The victim's oxygen tank was struck by a bullet. The rifling marks also match up. There's no question that the bullet was fired from Detective Arm's gun. Bullet found in the victim's oxygen tank. It was fired from a 38 caliber gun. And the rifling marks. The more like a gun's fingerprints on a bullet, correct? And examining the rifle marks on a bullet can tell us the gun it was fired from. Yes, that's right. One of the bullets the detective fired found its way into the holographic image display. The other bullet came to a stop near the victim's oxygen tank. The evidence confirms the director's statement that the director fired two shots. My beautiful contradiction. Gone. All gone. No, it isn't. So that battle was from a 38 caliber, huh? I better update the record. Bullet hole updated in the court record. But well, we still have a 10 caliber bullet. Very good. Now we know the fate of both the shots that Detective Arm fired. Mr. Wright, does that clear up all of your questions? Hmm. Detective Arm fired two warning shots. One hit the holographic display and the other the oxygen tank. Does that really clear up everything about what happened at scene? No, it doesn't. No, Your Honor, it doesn't. Detective Arm fired two warning shots from a 38 caliber gun. But that doesn't explain the existence of a certain piece of evidence found at the scene. A piece that points to the existence of a third person. Ow. Very well, but we won't do to keep us waiting, Mr. Wright. What piece of evidence suggests the possibility of a third person at the scene? This does. And what is this millet pellet supposed to be? Just a little something of great importance we found at the crime scene, Your Honor. 
You found it where? In a floor gutter at the crime scene. It looks like the police and prosecution both missed it. Furthermore, this is a 10 caliber bullet, making it much smaller than one of Detective Arms' 38 calibers. Oh, well, then that means... Exactly. One more person must have been there in the lounge. A third person who had a gun that could fire 10 caliber bullets. Greg! And if that's true, it explains why Detective Arm fired warning shots. The third person fired at Detective Arm and directed Cosmos with the gun. And in return, the detective fired her warning shots. Isn't that how it really went down, Director Cosmos? So wait, he's not the killer? Haha, <laughs> it looks like you deduced my miraculous tale of survival. Well yes, you're absolutely correct. The mystery person fired upon us. Uh, what's this now? I thought he was sure, sure the murderer. What? You never breathed the word of any of this to me before. Aha, uh -huh. well, all great men have a secret too, don't you know? Ah, ah. foolish old geezer. So, Director Cosmos really has been hiding the presence of a third person all along? Director Cosmos, I want you to testify to the court about what you really saw. You may be a very great man, but my courtroom, you're just another witness. You won't receive special treatment here. Now, please give accurate testimony. Or he could be lying about the third person. Maybe he had two guns? Or maybe his gun was the 10 caliber? What I really saw at the scene. Detective Arm and I rushed to the control room together. In the lounge, we saw a figure standing in the middle of the room, and Teddy on the floor. We were still in the control room to the east, when the figure fired at us. Hmm, given that there was no third person lounge when the witness entered it, does this mean the person who fired the gun had to have been the defendant? Not necessarily, it's still possible that was someone else. Most likely, as soon as Detective Arm and Director Cosmos discover this person, they escape through this other door, the one that didn't have a security lock. Objection! Double-edged swords are a tricky lot. I send a one, and it is you who has cut down. Huh? Your reasoning could apply as Space Boy were the killer as well. Think about it. After being discovered, he could have fired the 10 caliber gun. Detective Arm would have responded by firing two warning shots. All he had to do was feign unconsciousness to invent the possibility of a third person. Objection! But Mr. Starbuck didn't have a gun in his position when he was found by police. Nor has a gun been found at a crime scene. An absence can only be explained if there was a third party who took it with them. Objection! Recall the existence of a trash chute in the boarding lounge. The defendant could have simply thrown the gun down the chute. Objection! But you can't deny the possibility of a third person leaving him with a weapon. You can't deny my wiggling little finger here. Objection! It's up to you to prove that possibility. And I trust you have forgotten my little piece of decisive evidence. What evidence? Why, the detonated switch that was found in Mr. Starbuck's pocket, naturally. The most compelling evidence of all that tells us he is a culprit. I could have been planted on him. Arg! I did forget about all that. Look upon this. How deliciously obvious it is that they lack the confident evidence to rival mine. Wow, you slice out their person theory to women's inserted to us just like that. Yes, well, I have a question of my own, actually. Bullet that the mysterious figure shot. What did it hit exactly? Hmm. It hit me. So does that mean you're a ghost? Oh my god, Judge. <laughs> I was wondering when you would realize it, your baldness. Director Cosmos is an authentic, bona fide ghost. 
He can even pass through walls. <laughs> Egg! Oh dear lord. Let's get it back, Will. Shame on you for testing that nice old gentleman. Ha, huh, it's too easy. Your baldness was all just in jest. Please show yourself again. Are you sure? In that case, uh, how did you manage to survive being shut, Director Cosmos? Ha ha ha! I'm glad that you asked. It was a miracle. A miracle befitting a great history making figure such as myself. The bullet hit my glorious medal of honor, whereby it recalled the saving my life. What? That's very fortunate. Very Deadpool like. Deadpool 2. Now that's unbelievable. I had to check this out. Oh, wow. Look at that. There's one extra galaxy saw. Oh, yeah, you're right. Wow. Absolutely astronomical. Astronomical. I guess it really was a miracle. It's beginning to really feel like the cosmos is watching out for the cosmos. <laughs> Why did you conceal this information, Director Cosmos? A good art man, such as myself, has to hide things on occasion, no matter how much it hurts. It is a plight of the truly great. It may be hard for this generation to understand. I don't know, but it's not fishy to me. What else is he hiding? Let's just cross-examine him and see what else we can find out. Now then, Mr. Wright, cross-examine him, please. Alright, a good stopping point here. We will pick up all the cross-examination in the next video. Much love to you all. I hope you have a wonderful, fantastic, amazingly awesome day. And as always, just remember that you matter. You're amazing. You're brilliant. You are just loved. And you mean so much to me. I'm sure you mean so much to others. So, ha just shine brightly this week, shall you? Shall we? And uh, until next time, so long and take care. Thank you for watching this video. Feel free to comment on what you saw and what you'd like to see next. I always love to hear your thoughts. But before we go, please remember that you matter and you are brilliant and you are loved and you should always be true to yourself. Never let the world tell you any different. Much love to you from your friendly, feathered, flightless bird.